All right, it's Chris Petrie, everyone. Thanks for coming by. Hey, if you're new here, if this is the first time you're seeing any of my videos, please uh, consider subscribing. Just hit the subscribe button below, and um, this way you'll be alerted every weekend when we create a new video, and you'll be able to um, come along with our fun as we're in the studio here and we're painting. And sometimes we even go out and do some adventures and paint outdoors, and we do all kinds of great stuff on this channel. So, uh, you know, please um, subscribe if you haven't. Um, and uh, let's just get right into it here. So this video, I wanted to kind of just emphasize drawing. Drawing skills are really important uh, in watercolor especially because you, you almost, you have to capture what you're going to paint first with your sketch and your drawing. So to make it more fun uh, as far as drawing and practicing our drawing skills, because I know not everyone likes to draw, um, I personally like to draw a lot. That's me. I like to sketch and I like to draw and I have books and books and books of just sketchbooks, you know, the um, spiral ones that are inexpensive and I just fill them up with drawings and I draw everything. I take it out with me wherever I go and so forth. And I, I did more back years back, but I, I still do it now. And so I encourage everyone, please draw as much as you can. Draw a lot. You should draw probably more than you do paint. So a good ratio is 60% uh, drawing and 40% painting. So your time invested in your watercolors, 60% of the time you're mostly drawing, and then 40% of the time you know, you're know you taking your drawings and then painting along with them. So if, if you use that formula, you'll definitely get a lot of um, practice in on your drawing. So let's do that here. So now this is what I did here. You see me do this all the time if you're a regular uh, to my channel. I take um, mats. And I use them to section off portions of a painting that I might find interesting or I might not want to do a whole painting. So I'll zone in on one area, focus in on one area of a painting, and then um, draw and paint that section versus trying to do the whole thing. And it really helps a lot to maybe um, you know just focus in on a section and get the overall idea of the entire painting by not having to paint the entire painting but just paint a portion of it because there's basically all repeating patterns within this painting that we're looking at here so we'll zoom in here i'll get this set first i was looking at it before and i found that this was the most enjoyable pleasant and pleasing spot that i could put this square type mat over that and let's zoom in so here you could take a picture of this and print it out on a printer or save it as a photo uh, on an electronic device like, a, like an iPhone or an iPad. And then you could set that up and work from that. And so this is what we're going to do here. So I sectioned it off. And again, you can, if you find you're looking through paintings or photographs, whatever, you can use this method by moving it around and Maybe you could take this one painting and make five or six paintings out of it by moving it around to different sections. So over here I moved it over to this side of the... That's interesting too. But I found that this over here was my favorite. There. So let's do this. So I'm going to tape this down where I have it set. I use really good tape, really good artist tape, drafting tape actually, to tape down my mat to the book that I'm working from so that I don't uh, destroy the, the pages on the book. So I tape this down to the book, the mat, with a little bit of, I have watercolor paper to make this mat even, even smaller so you can adjust that. You can tape a piece of paper underneath the mat and adjust it and open and close the window of the mat if you want. And that's what I did here. And we'll zoom out just to kind of show that. All right, I'm going to set this up across for me, across from my art table. Okay. 
and I'll zoom out. And zoom in a little. All right, there it is. Perfect. Okay, so let's get started. Now here, let's use some simple drawing tools. Let's use a couple Sharpies. These are readily available. Any stores have them. You know, local stores, um, convenience stores, and any type of uh, pharmacy stores, anything like that, you'll find Sharpies. They're permanent. And we'll, we'll draw our drawing first with the Sharpies. And again, this is just a practice on drawing skills here. So let's, let's have fun with this. I'm going to get my... You could do this in pencil first, lightly, to kind of shape out the, the scene. I'm going to go right in and just do the... Do the scene. I'm going to go quickly here. Okay, this is the roof here. It's a little more of an angle like that. And these distant buildings and trees and things will just lightly indicate those. Then there's there's some trees, distant trees here. They're a cooler color a little bit. Then there's another building back here I see. Then this over here. So I'm just checking my angles here and I'm, I'm looking at that, I'm looking at that, sometimes I'll hold up my pen, I'll take my pen or my pencil or my marker and I'll hold it up in front of me just to kind of see where the, where the angles are. So if I hold my pen up straight like this, I can kind of see is, is the angle going this way, this way, in the, in the picture that I'm copying from, let's say, or, or if I'm outside doing a, something outdoors. So the pen is a great way you just hold it up in front of your eyes and, and move it around to get angles and so forth. So here I do that. And then I sort of, uh, I'm going to probably use the other Sharpie in a second here just to get some other um, interesting things. But here we have the, some of the uh, telephone poles and things with wires and, and there's some more buildings here so we're going to That building goes up like that. And then we'll capture a, lo a lot of this with the painting portion, but we are going to, again, we're using a Sharpie just to do our drawing first. And we'll have fun with this. And and we're re remembering that we're just doing this. We're really, we're trying to practice our drawing skills here and um, have fun with it. And, and then we'll splash on some color and it'll be like an ink and wash. Basi basically, this is an ink and wash. We're using pen ink instead of, let's say, maybe uh, Indian ink or other inks out there. We'll do maybe we'll do some more, um, some more paintings with the India ink, and maybe like using um, bamboo pens. I've done those in the past on previous um, videos, and so here I'm just doing some reflections. This is the reflection of the building on the street level. And it looks like maybe a nice rainy day out, so there's lots of uh, reflections in the street. And so we're going to bring those down just to help us remember. Let's bring down some of these verticals, these vertical lines into the street. And we'll have a lot of fun with that. That's going to make this painting really exciting. The, the shadows and the shadowing on the street here with the 
wet pavement maybe, let's say. It's a rainy day or it just stopped raining and it's overcast. And, and we have these buildings in the background. We're just going to... We'll do those with a very cool color. It's in the distance. All right, so we have pretty much our, our things laid out here pretty well. We got uh, our um, building, our other buildings to the right here on the right side of the uh, the painting. And then a lot of the most of this is going to be paint. So let's get into it and paint. But again, we remember that we're practicing our drawing and let's do a little more drawing. Let's get these. Uh, there's some windows up here. So let's get some windows in there and we can rough, uh, rough them in with um, our pen, of course. And, and the fun thing about windows is we try to, try to change the way they look if we can. Like not make them all the symmetrical, but try to, that tends to look really good. Because usually windows, they have glass, right? And light and shadow bouncing off glass and interesting things like that. So rarely do you see windows looking the same. So if we notice that that's the, the way it is out in real life, then we try to try to capture that in the, in the painting as well. And then here we see an umbra, uh, a canopy over the top here. And this is, looks a little mysterious, this uh, canopy over here. And, some, uh, and now I'll, I'll uh, go up to a little bit of a larger Sharpie here. Since I'm using rough watercolor paper, it's, it's probably... Uh, it's a little bit... Uh, it wears out the, the tips of the markers a little bit. So we could use smooth watercolor paper too with this type of painting. That would work fine actually. For some reason I I started out thinking I was going to use rough paper today and now I think that uh, would have been a little better with the um, smooth paper, but that's all right. We'll just work with it. And we've got some... Uh, Some, uh, telegraph wires and so forth so we just have some of those in there and uh, we'll do some more shadowing here and then I noticed there's shadowing under here under the um, roof area that looks like a mansard roof on this building so we uh, try to get that look with the um, shadowing underneath it and the angles correct. Okay, again, we're having fun. We're practicing our drawing skills. We're roughing out things with our um, Sharpies here. And I see another... Uh, Looks like a street sign maybe here. And there's some windows in here too. We'll rough those in. Okay, now we can uh, work in some paint. Okay, we'll get some fresh water. And I always start, start out with fresh, clean water.
think we'll do this in glazings. Let's let's do this um, light first, light colors first, and then we'll do darker ones as we go. So I think the predominant in this um, painting is more warmer colors. Definitely more warm. There's a lot of um, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, uh, raw sienna I see in there. Uh, maybe alizarin crimson. I see a lot of warm colors. Uh, cadmium orange is in there, yellows, and then there's a little bit of blue, cool colors too in the distance, but mostly it's a warmer painting, so with a lot of earth tones, so let's, we'll mix up a sky color, and we'll, the sky color does have some earth tones, it looks, so we'll use some raw sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre, and some cerulean blue, And again, even though it's going to be a very light sky, we have to go a little darker. So usually, whatever you see in your palette, it's going to sort of be about half as light as that. So that looks about right here. We got, and I'm just. Now, what's good about this is. We can just paint over the whole picture with the same raw sienna, yellow ochre, and cerulean blue. We just get that first wash on. Here there's no clouds in the sky. It looks like an overcast sky. And I could have used a larger brush here, but we can make do with this here. We'll just continue with a nice, just got a nice light wash on here. Yellow ochre, raw sienna, we got to mix that raw sienna out. And cerulean blue. And if we get that first glazing on, perfect. It'll be just the right first glazing that we need for that undercoat. And then we're going to be set as we go on to our next washes over top of this. All right, perfect. All right, so let me get the, dry, the hair dryer here. Okay, this is not 100% completely dry, but it is mostly dry. So now, we'll be careful, we'll, we'll go into our palette and we'll mop up our original washes. Too much water there for our next glazing, so let's mop up that, uh, the uh, other wash mixes. Okay, now. Let's go and we'll do some of our darker washes. And again, I'm just doing this for an idea here. Let's, you're going to take your time more when you're uh, in your studio or in your home painting, and or maybe you paint uh, at work sometimes at lunchtime, whatever. Or, you know, however you paint, that's fine. Let's mix some warm colors here. Burnt umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna. We're breaking out our warm colors, earth colors, and we got yellow ochre too. And again, you're going to take your time more. I'm just going to try to get the idea of everything here. So that it's... Um, and I'm using the... Uh, I'm using the painting as a guide. 
So I'm adding a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue to the earth color mixes to get a little darker. And then we'll go under the, the eaves of this here. And already we see we're getting that nice watercolor look. Lots of colors and then here I see a little bit of green. I'm going to mix in some greens down here. It, it makes a nice addition to the colors. So now I'm going to add a little green everywhere. If I think of a new color I want to add to this that I see when I'm painting, then I just immediately start adding it everywhere so that I remember to harmonize the painting. And then we've got some darks here at the bottom of the painting. Let's. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue to get those really nice darks here. Maybe some uh, Cobalt Blue. Again, I'm having fun with this. I want you to do the same thing. Have fun with the colors, with the washes. Don't get too worried. Um, just follow the follow the painting you're working from, or the picture, the photograph. Always look back and keep looking back and forth, back and forth to the pic, to the painting, or the or, or whatever you're working from. Photograph your um, electronic device, whatever you're working from. Keep looking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, to get to get your uh, accuracy with your colors and your tonal values. And so here I'm going in. I see more. those earth tones and they, they they go right down into the street level like that then I see that green again the olive green so everywhere with the olive green and again I'm leave uh, I'm leaving some white of the paper or really light the first glazing that we use that we created, we want to definitely um, leave some of that and not completely cover everything once we're we're doing this. So we definitely want to leave some lights. Here we have some more darks. We're going to go in with that again here. You can get more creative and use more colors than I am here. Here's just French ultramarine blue and then the other warm colors mixed to get the darks. And there's some skips and things. There's not all um, solid. I break things up. You can see in the photograph that we're working from that things are broken up here and there. I'm going to splash a little bit. A little bit interesting effect. And then we're going to go in again with our Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber, trying to keep this not too wet, keep it mostly paint. Some of the green too, the yellow, I mean the um, olive green in there. And then as we get to the further sections of the painting, going to be more lighter tonal values with a little bit of darks in there. Okay, so that's really just think when you're going into the distance cooler colors. So you'd want to use more blue in your mixes as you go into the distance in this that far distance in this painting. And with most paintings it really works well if you just remember to go cooler as you go into the distance. And then here we're just again going to those warm tones for the buildings, these buildings are the warmer tones, the closer things are, the darker they are, so here we're going to go darker. The darks, we're going to use the darks, remember the darks, closer up, lighter and cooler, far away. This is exciting, and then you can always drop in some colors here and there. Visually looks really good. We don't forget our olive greens. Mix around a little bit. 
in there. We used it over on this side, so we definitely want to use the repeating colors over here. And a little bit of a... That's our roof over here. And then over there, I'm trying to make sure I... All right, that's about it. That is it. Look at how quick that was. See how easy and fast that was? We practiced our drawing skills with our pen, our uh, pens, our permanent black ink pens. And then we can even, again, when it dries, you can go in and do a little more pen work. Maybe, maybe I make a couple little things here and there. But you can go back in again and do some more final details on it, but that's pretty much it. All right, I hope everyone had a great time. This is really fun. Practice your drawing mostly, and then you just throw some washes on there like this and have a real good time, and you come up with a really beautiful painting at the same time, and we'll, we've practiced our drawing, which is what we want to do. Our goal as watercolor artists, we want to draw a lot, so we break out our permanent pens, our Sharpie pens. We do that. Then we get out the watercolors and just do a little bit of color mixing on there, and look at that. Just fantastic. Let's see if I can move this over a little more and we can zoom in. Sorry about the camera shake there. But that's pretty much very simple approach. I kept my color palette pretty simple. Warmer colors mostly in this painting with a little bit of the cool color, some of the blue. Cerulean blue, really, and, and ultra, French ultramarine were the only blues I really used. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Have fun. Happy painting.